So before I start, I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer. I'm a YouTuber, which means that I make videos on the internet that are about two to four minutes long, and they are very, very edited. This talk is gonna be about 10 minutes long and all in one go. So if um, I mess up a line, I can't edit it. And if I forget what I'm about to say and um, don't worry, I'm just buffering. So, you know when someone comes to you with an amazing opportunity and you immediately say yes without thinking it through? Well, that's what happened to me when I got asked to give this talk. I had no clue what to speak about, but luckily for me, um, something happened recently that actually inspired what I'm about to say. So, about four years ago, I found myself with a lot of spare time and not much to do, and so I started watching YouTube videos specifically vloggers who are people who sit or stand in front of a camera and talk. Now this just looked like so much fun to me and so I decided to start making videos of my own. I actually began making cooking videos um, because I wanted to teach myself how to cook. Those videos are now private and you can never watch them. <laughs> As I started to build a modest audience, I noticed that my subscribers were mostly young teenage girls and I kind of felt responsible for them and I wanted to help them in some way. Now, backstory. I had an adequate sex education growing up from my parents and from teachers in school. It wasn't perfect, but when I went to sixth form, I soon realized that it was a lot better than what some of my peers had received. And this failure in sex education is something that I've thought a lot about since. And so making sex ed videos for my young and impressionable audience um, seemed like the right thing to do. And so I started talking openly about sex online and everything that goes along with it. Um, sexuality, gender, masturbation, sex toys, abuse, consent, relationships, love, and gender equality. And slowly but surely, more and more people started watching my videos, and I've now accumulated over six million views. Now, I'm a really idealistic person. When I first started making videos about sex, I genuinely believed that I would change the world. People would listen and become more educated and less ignorant, and then we could all work together to improve the formal sex education in schools, and then we could live in a society where sex isn't something to be ashamed or embarrassed about, but something to celebrate, and every gender identity and every sexual orientation is accepted and consent and abuse are talked about properly. And the thing is, is that my commenters were agreeing with me. My audience was on my side and the audiences that I gained in the process were also really supportive and positive about the messages that I was trying to get across. I thought, yes, this is working. I'm creating reasonable human beings. Go me. I am amazing. I was shortlisted for the Young Person of the Year Sexual Health Award and I've spoken and moderated um, panels on sex and gender at various YouTube conventions in London and Orlando and Los Angeles. I was becoming known as one of the few YouTubers and in fact the only one in the UK who would actually talk about such issues. I wanted to change the world and the numbers apparently told me that I was doing a pretty good job of it. Now, the thing you need to know is that YouTubers are personalities. We're brands. We have a certain image, an outlook on life, a style and opinions that help build communities and engagement around our videos. And so the age old debate of cause and effect comes into here. Are my subscribers opinionated the way they are because they watch my videos? Or did they click subscribe because they already held the same views as me? I would always say to my other YouTube friends how lucky I am that I barely receive any hate comments and that my subscribers are so respectful and intelligent and funny and inspiring. I felt safe in my little bubble on the internet. I liked it there. I was making videos that I thought would change things and I had an audience that was supportive and believed it too. I didn't realize how wrong I was until I made a video a few months ago 
called Do I Look Like a Slut? You know when you're getting ready for a night out with your friends and somebody says, Do I look like a slut? What is so bad about looking like a slut that you want to disassociate yourself from that? And what does a slut even look like? What is a slut? It's usually associated with a woman's sexual behaviour, but how can you tell how much sex a woman has from the way that she dresses? There's no such thing as a slut. And here's what changed with this video. It got featured on many viral video sharing websites. The week that it got featured, my notifications exploded like I've never experienced before. To give you an idea of the impact, my videos normally get around 30,000 views each, and this one now stands at over half a million views. I gained 20,000 subscribers and 8,000 likes on my Facebook page. It, it was an insane week. Um, I was so happy that so many people were seeing this video that contained a message that I really care about. But these new viewers weren't part of my happy, jolly, sunshine and rainbows corner of the internet. A lot of them were mean and nasty and sexist. Very quickly, I had to stop reading the comments because they were so disgusting and there were too many of them for me to moderate. It was pretty scary. I was being attacked for speaking out about how I don't like to be called a slut. But I'm quite lucky in that I can say that I'm a confident and self-assured person. My time on YouTube and the odd hate comment here and there has given me quite a thick skin and even though these comments were awful, I never let them dwell on me that much. But the thing that helped me ignore them the most was the tweets and the Facebook messages that I was receiving. Rather than just leaving a comment on the video, many people reached out to me on social media to thank me for making that video. I got streams of messages from people saying that it had made them think about things differently or it was making them ask questions or had given them a new perspective. Some people said that they agreed with me on some things, but didn't agree or didn't quite understand others, and they were respectful in their debates. This is what warmed my heart, and this is why I think that that video was a success. I was reaching people beyond my safe internet bubble. I was no longer preaching to the choir. I was beginning to change people's minds. When I first started making videos, my audience was predominantly girls. It is now about 50-50 male-female. Um, a few months ago, a statistic like that would have frightened me, but now I embrace it. Stepping out of my comfort zone and bursting my safe internet bubble is scary, but it's necessary. I wish that there was a way to make the world better without making yourself vulnerable to so much unwanted hate from anonymous strangers. But I figured that if I'm making a bunch of people angry, then I'm probably doing something right. And this isn't just specific to internet culture. Think about Emma Watson addressing her UN speech about feminism to men. So many boys and men took up the hashtag he for she in support. We tend to stick to what we know and the people who make us feel safe. But every so often, if you talk to someone who's different to you or somebody that you disagree with, you may leave a little spark of curiosity in their mind, or you may learn some new things that'll give you a new perspective yourself. Be open to change and don't be afraid to stand up for it. Thank you.